Okay, this is a big deal. I've been trying to get this word out now for about 12 years. It's about the buckle fat pad within the face and utilizing the sculpting of it to sculpt and contour the face. So the buckle fat pad creates a contour in the lower third of the face. The classic argument would be, oh, that's gonna prematurely age you. The key is, look, we gotta look at some anatomy. Okay, so look, here we got the face with some anatomy. You're gonna see the superficial fat pads. Those are what lead to aging. The superficial fat pads shrink with age. Watch them shrink here. That leads to the classic compartmentalization of the face. Starting to get separation of these two superficial fat pads. To correct this, we make a needle, or we take a needle or a cane, we go externally through the face, and we fill fat or fillers to smooth out those compartments. The buccal fat pad, you have to take away those superficial fat pads. You see the arteries, the muscles, the nerves, the parotid gland, the facial artery, the facial vein, the facial nerve, the parotid duct. All of these things are superficial to the, to the buccal fat pad. Then the buccal fat pad is deep. It's deep to these. It actually becomes engorged. It pseudo herniates with age. So it actually increases with age. Now I'm gonna come to a few articles. Look at this. These, uh, these gentlemen, brilliant gentlemen, have proved that over time the buccal fat pad gets bigger. It, it, it engorges itself. It's like the orbital fat. It's a different fat pad. Any surgeon out there uh, watching this who has seen orbital fat and who has seen buccal fat knows what I'm saying. It's it's yellow. It's bright. It has a high stem cell con cell, uh, content. It, it, it really is uh, a very uh, hydrophilic. It absorbs water. It's, it has a, a sustainability to it. So over time, it gets bigger. It's like the orbital fat. We manipulate that fat pad because as people age, it pseudo herniates through the orbital septum. Similarly, the buccal fat pad pseudo herniates through its capsule. Another article showing, boom, this fat pad does not shrink with age. People who say that are wrong. I'll repeat that. People who say that are wrong. So you're either ignorant or stupid if you say that. I don't know what else to tell you guys. It's just the reality of it. Research it. Look at it. Um, it, it, it now, all of that being said, the buccal fat pad, removing it or shrinking it, does create a contour of that lower third of the face. So that needs to be an aesthetic you like. If you don't like the contour of the lower third of the face, if you don't like a little hollowness here and a sharp jawline, then it's not the right procedure for you. There's some populations, um, the Korean population particularly, they like a round face. A round face um, is what the, uh, their aesthetic is. So it's an aesthetic. Uh, this is about consent. It's about patients knowing what they're getting. If it's something you like, a little bit of that contour, you think that's sexy, you think that's hot, I particularly do, then this could be the right procedure for you. So it's really about the layers in the face. Um, think about a layered cake. You have the, the top layer is the cream, the second layer would be uh, kind of the, 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 the first layer of cake, that would be the superficial fat pad. You don't want to mess with that or the top layer will get wavy. The, the buckle fat's like the ice cream at the bottom. It really is the, gives the firmness. So manipulating that, if that melts, the top layer of the cake gets a little contour. But it doesn't get wrinkly and old looking. That's the superficial layer, that's the superficial fat. So the buccal fat pad does not shrink with age. It does not prematurely age you. I'll argue it with anybody. I think anybody who says it does has never cut through the layers of the face. So we have a cadaver head here every year and we teach the fellow and some of the uh, injectors in the office the layers of the face and how you manipulating them manipulates and sculpts the face. So the key is the layer that we are manipulating. I've added to this, I've expanded this procedure, adding the, removing the mucosa and manipulating the muscle on the internal portion of the cheeks, the buccinator muscle. So if you bite on your cheeks and look at your three quarter, you'll see that actually lifts the jaw. That's a, it's a, like an inside out cheek lift, I call it. So that actually decreases aging. I mean, it's, 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 it's so uh, uh, powerful. It's a really neat proponent of this uh, procedure. I, I extrapolated that twofold. One, when we do a lower eyelid uh, blepharoplasty, we take a little strip of that muscle, the orbicularis, which is a sphincter, the buccinator muscle, also a sphincter. So I take a strip of that, and that further tightens the cheek, further sculpts that area, and lifts up the pre-jaw. I had a patient at the county who had a skin cancer here. We cut it out, sutured it closed, uh, and, and, and then she came back and said, wow, my jawline looks spectacular. Can you do it to the other side? I said, no, you know, you're not gonna have a scar, you're not gonna risk those nerves. But I said, we can take the mucosa muscle. I do it on these buccal fat cases. So we take the mucosa muscle on the inside of the cheek and that really lifts things. Not to the same degree as the skin, but it can be a powerful maneuver. Check it out. Buccal fat pad sculpting to decrease aging and to further sculpt the face. Bingo, bingo.